sticking with delivering for them, that could be anything, right? Because everybody comes to the table with different qualities. Everybody brings a certain uniqueness to the table. When did you figure out what it was that your audience wanted? And I asked you this because you said you started out with a couple of friends before and you guys were just playing with the platform, didn't really do anything. Those guys didn't take it serious. They dropped off. Here you are. You finally get into really focusing and putting out a video a week somewhere around 2013. Was it an aha moment for you when you said, hold up, people are actually wanting this particular piece of content that I'm bringing out? Was the audience talking back to you? How'd you even figure yeah. There were comments and people were asking for things. And at the end of the video, I was asking people, hey, what else do you want to see yet next? What tools do you want me to cover? Uh, is there another thing that I can do for you? Um, what do you still have questions about? What can I do better? Uh, it's just like customer service 101. You know, I, as a kid, I worked at the mall. I was making $6 an hour before I was ever making six figures. And uh, you learn customer service. You learn to ask people questions. I used to sell um, shoes. I used to work at Champ Sports at one point. Uh, I was a cross country and track runner. I was like, well, show me how you run. Like, well, how are your knees? Oh, you, you're in the military. So you have to carry around a 40, 50 pound rucksack. Okay, well, you need some more support. You need this. Oh, well, how are your arches? I would ask questions get context, listen, and then sit there and think, all right, what would make sense for you? What's in your best interest? Not what gets me the biggest commission, what helps you? And I would deliver. And that's customer service 101. One of my frustrations is a lot of people want to skip to just being on the internet and they have this disdain for the idea of ever working for somebody else. They don't want to have that in their track record. They want the sexy story of they went from high school or dropped out of high school or college and became an internet rock star, became a e-commerce guru or entrepreneur extraordinaire. And I, I think that as sexy as a story as that might sound, it's a vulnerability and it's a weakness because I think there's so much value and benefit. They have all this disdain and fear and angst and this judgment. They feel it's so shameful to work a traditional job or a quote unquote, what people call a real job. I don't like that word, by the way. I hate that word, real job. Um, like, so I use traditional job. They have all this disdain for the idea of uh, ever working a traditional job when I think one of the reasons I'm a successful content creator and one of the reasons I can help other content creators be successful and do this full time is because I worked those crappy retail jobs at the mall. I worked and had some positive and negative experiences in a, a corporate job and HR and all that good stuff and everything goes with it, protocols, SOPs, HR, uh, departments, uh, managers, like, and then got to become a manager. The fact that I worked in advertising and I know how the people who ultimately write YouTubers paychecks work. The fact that I understand how the platform works is because I did SEO. I did web design. I know how Google worked. I could rank number one in Google for the company. So I figured out how to rank YouTube videos. It was my advantage. I know and understand processes and systems and customer service and transactions and code. I understand the things that make YouTube YouTube and I understand the things that get people paid and I've done real businesses outside of YouTube and outside of internet. I've done the transactions. I've been a photographer. I know the customer service game. I know about delivering. Um, I've done client services. I've worked as an employee. I've, I understand these very important logistical things and technical things. And I understand the value of systems and structure and support. And somebody who bypasses all of that at 17 or 18 years old and just goes onto the internet, whether they make it or not, a lot of times they frankly just think they're more clever than they are. And there's a lot that they're naive about and it leads them to making mistakes. We speaking about, or I hear you speak about teenagers, 17, 18 year old, 15 year olds. Is it easier for them to cut through? Are there any barriers of entry that you found on this platform? Because pretty much anybody on planet Earth, if you can record a video, you can upload it onto YouTube. It's very easy. So people just think, hey, 
you know, I, I'll, I'll take the easy way out. I'll become a YouTuber. But are there any barriers to entry, you know, based on point, race, creed, color? No. No. At this point, no. At this point, no. Now, I will, because here's what I'll tell you even about that. I'll go a couple of ways. For one thing, someone, uh, let's start with age because it's easy. Someone 25 or 35 has a distinct advantage over someone who's 15, whether they like it or not, whether they believe it or not, because they think the culture of the platform is just so young. When they make the mistake, regardless of what age you are, if people your age are on the internet, they are on YouTube, period. So there's a market for you. Number two, YouTube has 2 billion people. You don't think there's an audience for you? There's 2 billion people globally worldwide logged into this platform that's the people who are logged in every month you don't think there's an audience for you the thing is and why people believe it's saturated and they don't have a chance is they're not willing to admit that well 99 percent of what's on the platform is garbage it's not quality it's not valuable it's not interesting and it's not specific it's every random jackhole thinking that it's so simple to turn on a camera and bear to entry wise it is but to actually make something worthy of people's time and attention not so much there are skill sets, my friend. And here's the thing. It is easier to be successful on YouTube if you're 25 or 35 than if you're 15. And people don't believe me. But the fact is, I have a client who's a small YouTuber with 2,000 subscribers. And he, in terms of ad revenue, I know we're going to talk about monetization um, later, but he's going to be more successful than most people because he made $400 this month off of just 10,000 views, which is abnormal, which is insane because most of these 15 year olds, they know that they're going to get a dollar for every 1,000 views they get. So if they made 10,000 views, they're going to get like 10 bucks. If they get a million views, they'll be lucky to get a thousand dollars off of it. My client is going to kill it because he's going to get, if he gets even a hundred thousand views, not even a million, he will make $4,000. If he got a million views, he'll make $40,000. That's because my client is um, a self-made millionaire who knows nothing really about being good on camera. He knows about real estate. He became a millionaire before he was 30. And so he's 33 and he has experience and he made his money in the last recession. And the thing is, he's not getting a ton of views and he's not going to reach a young audience. He's not going to reach 15 year old kids who want to watch pranks or watch gaming. He's reaching people with money. So advertisers pay him an absurd CPM rate. They pay him like $40 for every 1,000 views on his videos. And that's why with a million views getting, like not even going viral, that's just across the channel in a month, he will make an absurd amount of money. He will make tens of thousands of dollars per million views. The biggest, most successful, famous YouTubers get paid five hundred to two thousand dollars if they're lucky per million views. So everyone who thinks these YouTubers are balling because they get views, they're balling because they get sponsors. Because YouTube don't pay that much; it pays what sounds like a lot for a kid. And so you go out to California because you think you want to be famous, and you pay that LA rent, my homie. Until so you pay those LA taxes, my homie. Until so you have to pay the LA lifestyle. Um, that money don't go too far. What you think is good money, even as a kid, or what you think is good money for anybody is LA poor, okay? $100,000 a year is what we call LA poor. So that's the truth about YouTube money. And I bring that up to say that if you have lived a life and you're 25 or 35, here's the good news. You probably have done something for five to 10 years of your life, enough to be good at it and enough to be, um, b above average or even excellent at it. And if you're excellent at something and you come to the internet, here's the good news. Most people aren't good at things. Most people are mediocre at things. And when that's the only option people have, they're like, well, I'll choose the most, the least mediocre of the bunch. But with someone who has skill or knowledge or talent or experience or a credential, here's the thing. If you can come to YouTube and you're 35, 45, and you can say, I'm a self-made millionaire. Let me teach you what I know. You know what the answer is? Yes, please, and thank you. There's no abundance of self-made millionaires who weren't internet famous to become millionaires that were gonna come to the internet. So guess what? Here's the good news. If you're 30, 35, 45, and you can talk about your success, and you can talk about when you came out of the trailer park, the ghetto, or the bottom middle class, or you are a child of divorce, you can tell your story, and you can say, and here's how I made my first million. People are gonna watch. 
and you can talk about it. And you don't have to have the fanciest camera. Graham Stephan has 2 million subs now, blew up. He started with an iPhone. And he said to himself for years, I don't have the personality to be a YouTuber. No one would watch me or whatever. But he became a millionaire at 26. He had a story to tell. Not a lot of people can say that. And he was a college dropout, um, like went to college for, I think it was two months or something like that and said, nope, not for me. And um, child of the divorce, didn't have daddy's money. He just grinded real estate. He got his license, sold real estate, bought real estate, got tenants, you know, invested in the stock market, bought up stuff during the last recession, the end, millionaire at 26, right? There's a lot of people that have these success stories that built companies or businesses. There are people who built e-commerce companies in the last recession. There are people who are building Shopify stores now that went from the beginning of this pandemic, um, worrying about whether they're gonna be able to keep their job or they were doing their job remote from home, said, let me learn Shopify and now have six figure businesses in the course of a, of, of a summer or, the, or in two quarters. It's amazing. And now they can tell people how they did it and people will listen because it matters and they will be massive in five years because they have real world experience and real world accomplishments. It's very rare that if you're between ages 15 and 18, that you've done nothing, something of note or become best in class or become a top tier world-class talent or the top 10% at anything. Very rare. That's why big, famous, successful, young YouTubers are very rare. And usually they either have some extraordinary unicorn level of talent or they're just obsessed with YouTube and sacrifice everything else and take massive risk or they have a lot of advantages that the average person doesn't have. And that's why people from like 15 to 25 that happen to blow up and that become famous very young, that's why a lot of them they are already outliers in some aspect, either in talent or in circumstance or in their tenacity. And so if you're not that special unicorn, that's why people have been conditioned to believe and are groomed to believe that YouTube is luck because all they do is measure the last viral success story. That's why they think it's luck. I deal largely in people who come by their success through skill. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.